Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of our best, uh, sorry, worst team for Pokemon Red and Blue Let's Play. Last time we took on Erica, Parasect was the MVP of the entire battle. And today, we are going to head into the Rocket Game Corner, take on all that crap, and then go, uh, go take on Giovanni. Now, off screen, I went to actually go get, uh, Psychic for Sleeper. And Sleeper should be evolving into Hypno in this episode pretty quickly. But first, this guy's like, you're in front of the poster. Like, I'm like, don't get in my way. And I think one of the most hilarious parts of the Pokemon games is inside Sylphco. You guys know what I'm talking about? Oh no, I dropped the lift key. That part always makes me laugh and it's honestly so hysterical. I also got the uh, Psychic team for Sleeper as well, off screen, so that way you guys didn't have to watch me go and do that. I think I made a little bit of a mistake here when it came to um, its moveset. Yeah, it's super effective. Okay. A few episodes ago, I also said that Bug was super effective against, um, or sorry, uh, Poison was super effective against Psychic. No, it's actually Bug that's super effective against Poison. Did I say that? I think I I think I did. I don't know. Gen 1 is it is a very, very weird thing. If you press this button right here. A switch button, the poster. Let's push it. Nice. A really, really cool touch I've actually noticed about um the Pokemon games is that in Kanto. You'll notice that inside the game corner, it's green. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just real, real quickly gonna like point that out. Something that I've never, never, I've never ever noticed before is that in the Pokemon Center changes colors wherever city you're actually in. Like for example, in um in Cerulean or in Lavender, the Pokemon Center's pink. I mean, just like the city in general changes colors too, obviously. And like, obviously Cerulean is blue. It, it's just, I've never really, really noticed that the inside of the buildings actually change coloration either. It kind of blew my mind a little bit. I was like, wow. Like, I, I can't believe that these changes like existed. And like, I had no idea about them until I started like actually recording um this let's play. Okay, Cause I legitimately just like, just never even like really thought about it. It's like one of those things where you play a game like so many times and like you notice it, like you're still noticing things about it even many years later. And there are actually quite a few items in here that I like picking up. I don't really need that that Moonstone, for example, but I mean, I really don't need any of these items per se. Although I know that in some of the that some of these items are, um, yeah, like, like that that for example, like right there, that's money. And I think another one of these items too is also a rare candy. I, I I'll actually be honest, I actually sold my rare candy. Or, sorry, uh, rare candies, I should say. I sold my rare candies a couple episodes ago. For money. Horn Drill. I forgot, I forgot that Horn Drill was actually a TM in Generation 1. A lot of the TMs in Generation 1 are, uh... Are different in comparison to how TMs are in the later generations, for sure. Same with Gen 2, actually. Like, Swift was a TM in Generation 2. And I don't remember Swift ever being a TM again. Like, in, in Generation 3 is, um... Where, like, the vast majority of TMs actually got changed and whatnot. For the better, too, I would say. My question is, is this where we get the lift key? Or is it the, um... The next one? I'm also gonna fast forward through these rocket battles. I don't know, like, do, do you guys like it when I fast forward? Or do you guys not like it when I fast forward? I think that during the times of when I do fast forward, I mean, it's it's less time for me to talk to you guys. So I guess I will actually go ahead and actually keep these battles in here. 
These Raticates are also scary too because they have like Hyper Fang and whatnot. I remember like playing in um, the early days of uh, my youth and I would honestly, um, if any of my, my Pokemon were ever weak, those Raticates would always come back and like chomp me to death with their, uh, their, uh, their, their Hyper Fang attacks. Like right now, I know for a fact if I were to get hit by a Hyper Fang, Sleeper would die when like a snap of a finger. Honestly, I'm also d d just gonna say it. I think that these Raticates with Hyper Fang have actually been more difficult than any of the gym leaders. Rest in peace, I know. But it's just like when you have the Raticates coming in with the Hyper Fangs and there's a possibility of being able to, of getting critical hitted. I mean, it's just something else. I wish that I would have kept, see even, see look at that. Literally just as I mentioned that, a rat attack comes in in critical hits with the Hyper Fang. That's exactly what I'm talking about, guys. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And I find it funny, too, that Fungi was actually the weakest member in the party. Now Fungi is the strongest Pokemon in the party. I'm, not, I'm actually going to let Jerry come in here and uh, get some body slams off. All that crap I talked about Parasect, and now it's to MVP on this team, You've even taking out Erica, you love to see it. I will also have to go and heal up, um... You don't need to be out, Parasect, I'm gonna let Jerry take care of it. Oh, actually, yeah, Body Slam is actually disabled, wow. But I gotta go heal up, um, Drowsy. At the Pokemon Center, once, uh, we're done here. I actually get, um... Uh, and actually, Levitate doesn't exist here, which means you get hit by Dig. Sucker. But I, 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 will, I always forget that in the, uh, in the Rocket Game Corner, that the lift key is actually the next floor down and not here. So I gotta go grab, um, the, the lift key. I, I, I gotta go heal up though, because Drowsy has to evolve it in, into Hypno. I can't do it. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I am done healing, and um, I'm heading down to the floor where you can actually find the uh, the Sylph scope. Not sorry, not not the Sylph scope. The uh, the lift key. No more room for items. I oh man, I I'm just gonna toss that. I know it's silly. I hate Generation 1 when it comes to, to item inventory. Like, G G Generation 2, I will admit, like, fixed all that stuff. And the, the thing is with Generation 1, as, as I always say, it's like, they're the first Pokemon game, so I never can really get too mad at Generation 1 because, I mean, it's... They're the start of the Pokemon games. Bugs are expected to happen. Um, Little... Little stuff like that, like, uh, the bag space, critical hit ratios. I mean, like, it, it's basically the beta testing of the way how Pokemon should be. And that's why I, if I were ever to do, like, a tier list, Gen 1 would not be on, um, my worst Pokemon game. It would probably be maybe, eh, third to last. I mean, like, I... Generation 1, I just, I don't particularly love. Because, I mean, obviously, you know, I have my gripes about the the bag space and a couple of other things, too. But, I mean, I understand that Generation 1 was where Pokemon all started. And I'm willing to give it a pass on a lot of things, but... Then we get into more modern titles, which I've, I, I've ranted about plenty in um, my other uh, recordings I, I had of this series. I think you're actually about to evolve. How much experience until you actually do evolve? Yeah. I think I think after this drowsy, our drowsy will finally evolve into uh, into hypno. Okay, that's actually fine. Ah, that's hilarious. All right, good. Finally. Evolution time. I love it. 
I actually kind of forgot what uh, what Hypno's uh, sprite looks like in Generation 1. Hopefully it's not too freaky. Oh, that's actually not bad at all. What the heck? I get I forgot that Pokemon Blue actually fixed a lot of these. Pokemon Red uh unfortunately did not. Was it Pokemon Blue that, that had the better sprites and Pokemon Red that had the crappier ones? I legitimately like cannot remember like for the life of me. And this is the dude that actually has the lift key. I'm actually going to get let Diva get some experience now. Our entire team is pretty much also done, you guys. Our team is pretty much almost done. All we need to do now is capture Goldeen and evolve it in the, in the Sea King. And our uh, our final team is finished. I did um some research on where you can actually find Goldeen. And it's located on a, um, on a variety of routes. Via uh, the Super Rod or, or the Good Rod. And um, actually, well, once we're done with... Um, not Sylphco. Not Sylphco. Um... The Rocket Game Corner and the, um, and, uh, what, Lavender Tower. After we, um, you know, we save Mr. Fuji and we get the Pokey Flute, etc. Then we'll be able to go capture Goldeen and evolve into Sea King. I would say right now, in, in this Let's Play, we're all, we're literally about halfway done with it. Come on, you can do it. Come on, D.Va. Breakthrough. Oh, come on, man. And we got the crit. Nice. Good job. And this guy is going to have one of the most iconic lines in Pokemon. Ready? Oh, no. Oh, wait. No, no. Are you not the lift key guy? Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. This is Gen 1. You have to talk to him again, and then, then he'll drop the lift key. I think is, I think is, uh, is how that works. Is that how it works? Do, 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 I, do I have to talk to him again? Oh, man. If I talk to him again and he drops the lift key. Oh, no, I dropped the lift key after talking to him again. I love this game. I don't need the Moonstone anymore, by the way. I'm just going to go ahead and toss it. If I had to, like, it... I mean, like, I already evolved my Jigglypuff into Wigglytuff. That's all I really need. All right, but yeah, we, we got the lift key now. Now I have to go to that same spot I was in before. And then um, head back down. I remember as a kid, I used to get lost in here so many times. Did you guys ever have like the, the, those Pokemon puzzles as kids? Like where you would get lost in there like forever? That was me when I was in like Viridian Forest when I was like six years old. And, or, or I might have actually been five. And, like, I just could not, for the life of me, just figure out, like, how the hell to get out of, to get out of the forest. I'd be wandering around forever. And even in, in Generation 2, where I was, like, a little bit more of a competent Pokemon player. Like, I could get past the first area in Pokemon. Like, I could get out of Radiant Forest, but... I don't know if you guys remember, but there was um, the Ice Path puzzle in Generation 2... And you would have to move around on the uh, the ice blocks. I could not, for the life of me, figure out how in the hell to get out of there. And I remember, like, I, I'd be stuck. And I remember, like, I would ask my neighbors for help. And my uh, my neighbors were just so annoyed of me asking for help that they, they'd be, be like, Dude, figure it out for yourself. Like, we can't continue to keep walking you through every single Pokemon game and Zelda game. Like, you have to figure it out for yourself. And I remember... I would spend hours and hours and hours in the freaking rot not in the um in the flippant ice path trying to figure my way out. Another one. I think you guys can actually um relate to this one as well. Actually, I need to turn this in into a freaking Pokemon video idea. Pokemon places that I would get stuck in, like, as a kid. That's actually a really, really solid, um, Pokemon video idea for Mystic Umbreon. I need to, uh, I need to make a video on that. Another, uh, uh, place like I used to get stuck in a lot was in Wallace's or Wands Gym. Um, well, actually, in Pokemon Emerald, I pretty much figured it out, but... In Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, I was around nine years old. And I kid you guys not, I would always used to get stuck 
I mean, all the time, I would get stuck in the um, in the gym, and it was absolutely terrible. How like you would um, basically, if you've never played, um, actually, if you've played Pokemon uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, you have um, you you have a general idea of what I'm talking about. There were um, these little ice blocks that you would have to move around on in order for you to get to the next part of the gym. And as a kid, I would obviously get past the first one. The second one, I would get past maybe on like my third or fourth attempt. But that last row, like I, I kid you guys, not like that, that very, very last row, I would get stuck all the flipping time like it, it like it was bad like i would be stuck on there like moving back and forth and you know every time you would break one of the ice tiles you would get brought down to the floor below and the punishment for that was essentially you would have to battle all the trainers going back and forth all the way back to the very beginning of the gym and if you messed up in the last row, you would automatically battle um, one of the trainers when you would uh, when you would get blocked down. It, it would, like it, I kid you guys not, it was so annoying as a kid. Like I would have to do this at least like 10, 15 times. Like one time I, I remember like as a kid, it would take me like an hour to get past all the trainers. Also just because like back then like I really wasn't like competent like when it came to like type advantages. I mean, like I, I was and I wasn't, but I remember I had like my septile because uh, Trico was my favorite starter. I'd, I'd be wondering like, why is my grass type getting beat by these water type Pokemon? Or it's like, no, no, Mystic. The Celio that you're going up against just have Blizzard and Ice Beam. Or um, what's that move? Uh, it's like Ice Ball. It's like Rollout. You guys know what move move I'm, I'm talking about. It's like, it's um, dang, it's um, is it ice ball, where it's basically like rollout in like um and fury cutter, where like every single time uh the the move hits it, it gets stronger and like it builds up. It's not like rollout though, like where you're stuck. You actually get to switch back and forth with the move. It's like roll out like you're stuck. With Ice Ball, I don't think it works the same exact way, but I would get stuck down there for hours. And it was like a complete flipping nightmare. Like, it sucked. Right, anyways, though. We're about to face off against the Don, a.k.a. Giovanni. Um, Giovanni has a Kangaskhan. He has a Rhyhorn. I think I'm going to lead off with, um, I lead off with ducks, but ducks is going to be too weak for this. But I'll lead off with, uh, with, um, sleeper actually. I'll go for some fresh waters and get it all healed up. I think Giovanni also has a neat arena, if I'm not mistaken, or like a neato. I think he, either he has one of the Nidos here or he has one of the Nidos in, in his final gym battle. I don't remember off the top of my head. Onyx, okay. Do you have Rock Throw? Brock didn't have Rock Throw. Alright, you're gonna use Screech. That's okay. Onyx honestly has very, very frail special, so this should be pretty easy. Yeah, okay. One down, like five or four to three, uh, two to go. My bad. I, I cannot count for the life of me. You know what? I'm actually just gonna keep um sleeper out. Easy. Bye bye. I know for a fact that your last mana is gonna be Kangaskhan. Yeah. So that means against your gym team is where you're gonna have um. Your Nidorino, uh, etc. Oof, that's gonna be a toughie. Comet Punch actually does a pretty big chunk of damage, too, surprisingly. 
Got that crit off. When you get a critical hit on a multi-hit move, that actually kind of hurts pretty bad. Ooh, four times. If that would have hit five, hit, uh, Hypno would have been down. Wow, that actually did a pretty good chunk of damage. And the special felt, so even better. I'll go ahead. I'm going to use that uh, that max potion real fast. I want to I wanna let Sleeper get this final kill so it, it can get up to level 27. I'm definitely behind in levels of where I should be. I feel like grinding on those trainers outside of um, Vermilion City would have helped out. And the trainers on the side of uh, Celadon City as well. I might, gr I might grind on those trainers for later. Ooh, you got the... Uh, I thought, was that a crit? No, it wasn't a crit. Wow. And that um, that wasn't even a, uh, a super effective attack. But I guess you, your physical defense is pretty uh, is pretty bad. Um, I'll actually bring out ducks. Maybe ducks can actually finish off King of Skun if I go for a fly. Rage. Ooh, rage actually stacks. Not like to the extent of like rollout, but it does. I do, I'm, I'm going to be able to finish you off. Ooh, the attack row. Shit. Gotta be careful. Oh, I say that and it does like 20 damage. <laughs> nice. Okay. I'm surprised that Ducks actually didn't get a level up after that. 1600 experience is a lot. You at least have to be on the cusp of getting to level 27. At the very, very least, the cusp. And he gives me... I hate the fact that he just doesn't give you the silk scope automatically. Blue. There we go. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, For whatever reason, um, my mic cut off. That's really weird that, that I did that. Do I have one more trainer, or am I good? Can I get through? Not, I have one more trainer. Then they're like, You beat Giovanni, but now you have to take on two more of his goons. I think that that was actually meant for you. Um, Actually, yeah, that, that might have actually been meant for you. After you beat Giovanni. Knowing that your Pokemon are like, like weakened and stuff like that. That um, you would have to go and... Uh, they wanted to make it like a, a little bit more difficult after you beat Giovanni. Just to like be like, yeah, you can't heal until you beat us. And it's like, okay, dude, whatever. Like Giovanni's Pokemon are obviously like much stronger than like your level 21s. Like I'm actually. Ooh. Like I'm kind of surprised here. And actually just how weak. Like some of these uh, trainers Pokemon are. That's actually one of, like, um, the, the things that kind of tease me off about Pokemon sometimes is that the regular NPC's Pokemon are, like, a lot weaker than, like, your Pokemon are, like, in the party. Thus making it, like, a lot easier to, like, beat the game. And, like, th like thus making it, like, a lot easier to, like, get through the games and stuff like that. Although G Generation 1 actually um, isn't as bad as, like, for example, like, Generation 2. Like, by the time I get to, like, the 7th gym, every single Pokemon that are in, like, the, uh, Mahogany hideout, or, like, level 17 and, like, 16. It's like, what kind of crap is that? Like, really? Like, your Pokemon are, like, that weak at that point in time, like, when I get to the game? Like, come on. Really? Like, come on now. Okay, so... I actually held out on the blue battle until um we beat the uh the sylf uh, not the sylf I, I keep i keep i keep on getting sylf co and the rocket game corner uh mixed up but i say the blue battle for now i don't know why i do that like i know that the blue battle is meant for you to take on right when you get out of rock tunnel for extra experience but i've always just done it afterward because you technically can't progress inside of the uh, lavender town tower until you actually get the sylph scope so i've always kind of found it like you can come here and i guess it does make your time a little bit easier considering like you know you don't have to take on like all these trainers but i mean i don't know pokemon like at this point in time in the game it really it really doesn't matter like um what you actually do first sometimes i'll wait to take on erica after i beat um after i beat uh like, uh, Koga, for example. I don't know. Heck, dude, um... 
Maybe the Gen maybe the Gen One games are actually more o open world than Scarlet and Violet are. <laughs> oh man, open world my ass. Now y you guys know that theory about how Blue comes here for like his dead Radicate and like how he comes here for respects. I don't know if I believe in, in that theory. I, I used to believe in that theory, but my thing is is that Blue has always been a trainer. I mean, like he he himself says that when he's like like in in that battle, like in the in the SSN, for example, he says he's captured like forty five kinds of Pokemon at that point in time in the game. I mean, look at it. Like, he now has an execute on his team. Like, he substituted out... Like, the Raticate for the execute. And... It kind of just makes you wonder... He, like, does he rotate his mons? Did Raticate actually die? I think, personally, that he just rotates his mons. I think that that entire, like, Raticate dead theory is just completely blown out of proportion, and... I mean, don't get me wrong, Pokemon's dark. But I still think because, like, you... You get Blue to say a quote like, oh, he's captured 45 different kinds of Pokemon. And even in, like, the Pokemon anime, like, we see Gary rotates his team out quite a bit. I honestly just think that Blue just rotated out his Raticate to get Execute out. Blue is just, like, he's just that one Pokemon trainer that plays a little bit different, you know, than, um, than, I guess, like, the, the, the typical player. Because I've actually never played Pokemon where I've captured, I mean, like, I have and I haven't. I didn't do it, like, with the intent of using multiple Pokemon. It's always been with the intent of, okay, this is going to be my team of six Pokemon that I'm going to use for the remainder of the game. These are going to be the only Pokemon that I use for the remainder of the game. And with that said, I never actually meant to, like, swap out Pokemon, like, as I catch more of them. And I switch out my team a little bit, if that makes any sense. I've always just been like, okay, this is my team of six. This is all I can use. I can't use anything else. Like, I, I've, I've always played like by that really, really strict rule. But I've never actually done a playthrough where I've actually played in the style of how, how, how Blue does. Where you just capture multiple Pokemon and you try them out and you swap them around. I've never actually rotated my team around like how Blue does. And I'd actually be willing to, to try it out. Answer me this down in the comments. I, I, have you guys ever played like how Blue does, where like you you use multiple Pokemon and like you you rotate out rather than just use like a full team of six? I've never actually played Pokemon like that that before, and I'm I'm curious to see like how um if you guys have played it, how it actually worked out for you guys. But yeah, his um yeah yeah see right here he caught a Cubone, like he had like he he has other Pokemon, but. Some Pokemon he uses and some Pokemon he doesn't. Like in the anime, for example, like he um, uses, like he rotates out like his Golem, his Nidoking, his Arcanine. We even see Pokemon that he uses. Um, like there was like a screenshot from the Johto anime, I think where Ash is like doing like some research on Gary. And you see that he has like a, a pincer on the screen and like multiple of other Pokemon that like we don't really see him use but it's like those Pokemon exist like he just rotates them around I want to try playing Pokemon like that but we'll have to say that for another day because I think right now I'm actually going to end it off and next time we'll take on the remainder of um of the Lavender Town Tower and um, hopefully we can make our way down and go capture Goldine, our last team member. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I, mean, I apologize if this episode's a little bit shorter than usual. Um, the last episode actually went on like a little bit longer, so I wanted to make this one just a little bit shorter. But anyways, you guys, um, with that said, I'll see you guys real soon. Peace.